Hey, it's Ryan here. I thought I'd uh, share with you guys today how I uh, wrapped up uh, the interior of the ambulance and changed the color of the cabinets and the walls and that kind of thing with uh, the synthetic wood vinyl film and synthetic uh, rubberized tile is what I would call it. But here's a quick uh, intro on how to install it and uh, if you're out there trying to do something similar, I hope it helps you out. Thanks. <clears throat> so if you're after this ceramic glass tile look, um, it actually is really impressive. I, I'm quite surprised actually. It turned out a lot better than I ever expected it would, being fake, but everybody thinks it's real. So it's called Smart Tiles, the original. I picked them up at, uh, what was it, Home Depot. Lowe's has something very similar. And then you've got, uh, that's going to be for the tiles obviously. If you're after this wood look, um, they have it in many different finishes. The brand I chose to go with, it seems to be the best one for the price. The company name is Vivid, and you can get it uh, off eBay and buying it by the foot. I think it's available on a 48 inch roll. So, those are the two products that I'm going to be dealing with today. A lot today. of people, or a few people, ask this material that's on the wall here where'd I get it? How did I install it? So, I found the box that it came in. Uh, it's called Smart Tiles. Um, looks something like this in the store. I found it at Home Depot and I think I found it at Lowe's as well. And very similar to this material I put on the walls, um, it's just a flexible rubberized synthetic tile and you just put it on and stick it in place. That's how all of this was done. So and it's got, it's got the notches on the sides here. When you get to the next piece you just overlap them and it gives you that pattern. This stuff is really easy to install too and it, and it adheres very well. But like this wall was older, you know, it's 20 years old and I probably spent, you know, a good, I probably prepped it four or five times. Because like I'd say, I think I got it and then I was like, oh, I better check the edges one more time. Because if it's going to lift anywhere, it's always going to start on a corner or an edge. So it's best to just go ahead and just prep the heck out of those so you don't have any issues with it peeling up later. So there you go if you want to do tile. It's called Smart Tile, Smart Tiles, and they're available, I know for sure, at Home Depot, and I know there's some form of them that may be another brand at Lowe's. So, there's another idea for you. These were sliding glass doors. We turned them into cabinets that open, but uh, I had to order some more of this vinyl material that I wrapped all these cabinets that you see around here, all this wood looking stuff. So, <clears throat> I want these cabinets to match the rest. And I thought I was gonna. I thought I might as well show you guys how to install it, since I've had a lot of people ask about this particular material, as well as uh, this uh, backsplash uh, synthetic tile. So uh, I'll give you kind of a basic rundown, make it kind of quick. It's really pretty easy. Um, this is a new piece of plastic, so I know it's it's clean. I'm just gonna take some rubbing alcohol um, and just wipe it down to make sure it's degreased, so there's no fingerprints or anything that's on it. And then I have a. Uh, a piece of, that I've already got cut here that's the size I need for this. Um, it's a little bit oversized so I can just trim off the excess around the, the metal frame here. So anyway, um, I'll get it prepped up and then uh, show you how to do it. <clears throat> so this is isopropyl alcohol. It's 70%. On like plastics and that kind of thing, you don't want to use like 90% or anything real strong because it can, it can kind of eat away at the plastic and make it kind of hazy looking so but um, yeah just wipe it down make sure it's grease free and then um, we do this stuff at work but we have these cards that we use to install it and they you can kind of see it here it has this material on it and it's felt so it's soft so it won't scratch it that's what it comes down to you could easily just take like a microfiber cloth and wrap it around like a, your Bondo spreading card or any kind of plastic card. And then when you install it, you want to start from the center and work your way to the edges like that so that it tacks it down. These, um, you install these films dry. And normally with a film, if you install it dry, it's easy to get bubbles in it and get them trapped in there. But this has an adhesive that's got a textured grid pattern into it with air channels. so. If there is air pockets, most of the time, if you card it fairly hard, the air will get pushed out through those little cracks in the adhesive. So um, it's pretty straightforward. It's 
it's just a like a giant sticker it's really sticky so avoid having the adhesive side touch the other side or touch it itself so you kind of just position it and like I said start in the middle and like in a grid pattern divide it into quarters that maybe a little that cracking sound is the sound of me pushing an air bubble out you do have to be a little careful with this it is a kind of brittle film so when you get into spots where it's kind of coming together it's easy to crease it so you kind of have to imagine what it might want to lay down work on getting your corners nice and square and then the next thing you want to use is a razor knife. This particular one's an Ulfa knife. This is what we use in the industry. It's a really good knife. It has blades that you can snap off so you always have something sharp, which I'm going to do now. And then <clears throat> you just want to stick it up in the corner, put some force against that aluminum so you don't accidentally cut into the plastic and go off into the center. Kind of like wallpaper back in the day. So that's all the excess off there. And then to finish up, you just take your card, run it around the edges, and make sure it's sat down. So that's one way to change the way the look that you have of your interior that without changing out the cabinets and everything. I'll try to get this up a little closer here so you can see it. You can see this has a, a nice texture to it like wood grain as well as the pattern that you can visually see like wood grain. And uh, to finish this up what I'm going to do is just use like a heat gun of some kind. You could use almost like a hair blow dryer because it doesn't need to be very warm but I would heat this up around the edges just in case there's any spots from where maybe I was had stretched it a little bit cutting it or carding it and um, you heat it up, the material gets really soft, and then take that card with the felt edge again, and then just hit it around the corners, around the edges to make sure it's, it's all locked down. So that's pretty much it. That's how all of these cabinets in here were done. And um, you can see this is kind of the finished product that we're after here, where you can see this uh, cabinet there and this one below where it just has aluminum trim and it's wood in the center so it all kind of matches. So uh, I'm going to get on with the rest of this and oils, all kinds of things like that. They are like your worst enemy when you're dealing with any kind of uh, adhesive like this. So. see if I can get any details of the kind of bubbles and stuff we're talking about here I don't know if you can see like right in here that's air that's trapped and you just push a little harder and it generally will come right out if it doesn't you can use like a needle or like the tip of that razor knife I was showing you to uh, take the air out of it but usually usually you can get it to all go out just without anything more than just more pressure. It does tear very easy too, so when you cut it, when you're pulling off the film to excess film around the edges, 
pull it kind of consistently and slowly and pay attention to whether it, it's you might have not cut all the way through the product in one spot so if you're pulling it off and you do it kind of carelessly you could actually cause it to tear into the rest of the material you want so take it a little easy on how you remove it to try, just kind of try to help eliminate that so there's two cabinets done I'll do one more and then this side will be finished I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, there's a bubble right here. So, if you do get something trapped, you can literally just make a little incision so it has a spot to breathe from. It helps if you do it right, like that, that's better. But I could have pushed these out, but if you do get any trapped in there, this is how I would relieve them. So there you go. Yeah, so that turned out pretty good. Got four cabinets done that were just clear gloss before. So now they kind of match everything else like that. And I was able to get this side done over here as well, but I still have two more to go, but I have to wait until I cut a new piece of Lexan for that. So until then, that's how that'll be, but in the end, they should all look like this. So hopefully that helps you guys out. If anybody's curious about it, ask me some questions in the comments.